so in this video we're going to be talking about um when to use htmx when when do we use htmx uh we've seen a previous video where i talked about uh htmx how it compares to single page applications so when do we use htmx and when do we decide to still continue to go with the single page application approach even with all the wonderful things that htmx does to make developing applications simpler so let's um look at a few points i have here first uh when do you use htmx when should you use hypermedia when should you uh decide to make your app hypermedia driven and use an hypermedia library like um htmx and the first point is when you don't need a huge or complex amount of user interactivity yeah when you don't use it you need a huge complex amount of user activity a lot of apps out there are just basically code apps the the old interactions the old activities that is being done on the application can still be drilled down to crop and if that is what your app does and it just needs a user interface that would facilitate this crowd operations yeah be hypermedia driven for example even shop uh, sites like Am shopping sites like amazon and ebay most of these things they just display the display information and um you can let's say book or rather you can buy something which is basically a creation of another record and when you buy the thing all the activity from payment from displaying the details of what you bought to displaying the invoice they are all simple user interactions there is no complex thing really going on there um so if sites like ebay and amazon can still be that simple yeah you can just use go hypermedia driven you're not doing any kind of complex you're not building um photoshop in the in the cloud yeah you're not building photoshop in the cloud so just go with an hypermedia driven approach go with atmx uh new sites that just display news for you to scroll through put some uh infinite scrolling there awesome company websites those are even like the, the simplest or company personal website most mostly those are the simplest type of website they're basically just displaying things and most of the time the only form you see there is just to collect information so those uh type of sites that you require i don't require complex interactivity complex interactivity by the time when we look at when not to use htmx you will understand this better but one of the apps i'll uh, point out that has a very complex inter inter interaction is canva canva is a web app and you are basically having something like a graphic tool you, you have a graphic tool in the cloud and that involves a whole lot of interaction that involves a whole lot of complex user interactivity so yeah if, if, if it's that then you don't you don't go hypermedia driven but if you're still building a shopping site a new site personal website company website and all this stuff uh simple code applications uh, collecting uh, user data and stuff like that a whole lot of those applications can still go hypermedia driven so uh yeah and also when most of the value of uh, and logic of your app is done on the server side if all the operations the the main value is on the server side then just go hypermedia driven when you know that your front end basically just displays information and help coordinate users through uh the process that you are trying the workflow of the application but the entire logic is in the back end you're doing all your data processing in the back end you're doing all your uh complex logic in the back end the the, the value is for example you're building an app that let's say trans transcribes a video that that is not an app that uh, the, uh, the value of that app is on the back end where the whole transcription is happening or you're mining data you're doing a lot of um, data analysis and stuff like that it's, it's majorly in the back end you have a nice interface sitting on a well-designed database just go with the hypermedia route go with the hypermedia route you, you save yourself a whole lot of complexity like i said adopting the hypermedia approach for this saves you a whole lot of complexity that comes with the spa approach you just simply return fragments of your user interface that need to be updated with each interaction with your app that's all you do you change pages you switch from let's say let's let's uh, pick a site like amazon you see all the product pages just basically html displaying a bit of a bunch of product if user clicks a product you you swap the page with the product information which can be sent down as an hypermedia fragment as an html fragment and you check out and you see you confirm your your order which is another uh page entirely basically html simple html and you 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 purchase your, your you purchase your product and just go and have a happy day so when it comes to um simple interactivity just go with the media approach it's going to save you a lot of stuff whether uh, getting a bundler set up dealing with different versions of libraries and stuff 
all the things that you face the single page application just go with your hypermedia approach you don't need to set up next vessel gatsby or all those stuff for something like a blog like a blog site or a forum site no you don't need all that so go hypermedia approach you see powerful sites even like reddit and stuff these are just sites that just display information and I, the hypermedia approach is perfect for this kind of sites um also for these, you don't need, yeah, you don't need all the client side state management, you don't need routing, you don't need the UI model run by JavaScript to be updating, you don't need all that. When you have an application where most of the value is on the back end, most of the logic is in the back end, the interaction in the front end is simple, it's straightforward, go with an hypermedia approach, go with HTMX. And when not to use HTMX or hypermedia, when you have complex interactive applications for example online spreadsheets where a lot of state management is going on for example on a google sheet on a google Docs sheet a lot of state management is going on between different cells then yeah an hypermedia approach might not be the best you don't want to be making uh server calls to the api you don't want to be making calls to the api each time you want to update a particular part of like a thousand cells you want to want to you want to update cell a45 and you have to make an api call and as that is updating is also updating like three other cells now you don't want to go with an hypermedia approach for that. And also another app is Notion. Another app is Notion. Notion is like this blank canvas where you can use to create anything. You just bring in different different types of Notion components in. Those are quite complex applications that have a whole lot of customization that comes from the user. It doesn't come from you. A lot of decisions are not made by you on those type of application. Uh, uh, by you as the application developer on those type of applications, they are made by the user. So the user basically sh give the app it's same shape the shape what the app is supposed to be like the online spreadsheet like the notion page those are stuff that require a very very complex level of interaction at the front end and you don't want to uh use hypermedia for that you want to stick with your spa approach also apps that need to perform numerous actions state changes in the front end without interacting with the server like i mentioned canva in the other uh, the other time you don't want to make an api request every time you maybe increase the size of a rectangle or you bring in a triangle or you up no you don't want to that these these are apps that are using very very complex ui components a lot of them abstracted on top of the uh, html canvas and stuff like that to make all the wonderful interactions you're seeing happen some of them even use something like WebAssembly in the background so apps like canva where it's basically a graphic tool in the cloud yeah you don't you don't want to use like media for that online games also yeah i'm I, I, I don't even think the simplest games you should rely on hypermedia for that any online game just go with your spa approach and deal with the complexity because the app is complex anyway so apps that don't have any defined boundary as to when an api uh, something needs to be updated or, or what, there's no defined boundary as to what needs to be updated on the server and what needs to stay on the front end yeah, you just want to continue to use the single page application approach because those uh, libraries, those frameworks, React.js, Angular, they are built to deal with those kind of those kind of challenges. So yeah, these are the cases where you don't use hypermedia. These are complex applications requiring a whole lot of user interactivity. The user makes a whole lot of decisions and defines the shape of the application in a lot of ways. You want to stick to the SPA approach. Okay, I think I'm done. Yeah, so this. We've looked at when to use um when to use hypermedia or atmx when you don't need do all those huge complex user interactions when the value and the logic of the app is mainly on the server side uh yeah you want to adopt uh the hypermedia approach because it will save you a whole lot of complexity um you don't need all the state management and you don't need all your uh redox you don't need all the angular rxjs and views um which state library does view use i I think I forgot. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's bad of me. I'm, I'm a very big view fan and I forgot their state library. However, uh, when you're building complex applications that involve a whole lot of uh, complex interactivity, a lot of them uh, based on what the user defines to be the shape of the application like Google Docs, um, Notion, um, even, Google, even Google Word. Yeah, Google Docs. When I say Google Docs, I'm actually talking about spreadsheets. So, <laughs> like, but the entire Google Docs, um, things like Canva, things like um, online games and stuff like that, don't stick to the with the SPA approach because they are built to deal with such kind of complexity.